Hi, my name is Rachel Molotta and welcome to Tech Talks with Rachel. I'm a senior test engineer. And for those of you who don't know or are new to tech, a test engineer is in charge of the quality within the development lifecycle. I live in Manchester and I've been able to scale up my career to a point where I am my own boss as a contractor. So what that means is I source my own contracts and I determine who I work for, how long I work for them. And most importantly to me, I determine how much I get paid, whether that's a day rate, a month rate or an annual rate. Um, getting into tech was probably the best thing I ever did. Um, this is because manual labor jobs are slowly decreasing um, day to day. Um, this is usually because of the technology that's being introduced in most spheres. For example, if we look at supermarkets, we had more staff in supermarkets compared to today, probably 10 years ago. This is because of the cashiers that have been introduced. And soon there's even talks of supermarkets with no staff members where you can just walk in, pick up what you want and leave. And that's the future for the most manual labor jobs. They're slowly decreasing daily. But the good thing with that is more jobs, new jobs are being created in the tech sphere where I have kind of positioned myself to win, right? So that's why I say that was the best decision for me because it made me more employable. So I personally don't believe in a job security theory. I feel like that doesn't exist. Job security is an illusion. We tell ourselves or we, we make ourselves believe to stay in employment. Um, what I believe in is a supply and demand concept. If you're in an industry where you're not in high demand, so for example, there's maybe a lot of people who are able to do a cleaning job. So even though it is there and maybe let's say AI takes over and they can clean a building faster than a human being, that will probably decrease in demand. But if you're in an industry where you are in high demand, so for example, tech jobs, there's literally jobs that are being advertised every single day. You're probably gonna, if you lose your job today, you're probably gonna find one tomorrow or next week and walk into just as a good, if not better role um, within tech compared to some other manual labor jobs where maybe you're not as highly in demand. So that's what I mean by, I don't really believe in job security. Also, no matter how secure your job is, um, you don't know what tomorrow holds. So I believe in, having high skills or skills that are in high demand, um, high quality or um, skills that are just more intellectually challenging for the average person. So that's me in terms of um, why I got into tech and I feel that's why it's probably most rewarding for me. Um, so let's start from the beginning. Where am I coming from? And I'll tell you a little bit about myself, basically. So I am a creative at heart. I started my life <laughs> as a very creative young child. I played er any instrument that came my direction. So I remember in primary school, I was playing the recorder and the violin. And in secondary school, I was playing steel pans um, from the Caribbean. I really loved that. And I also um, played the piano. I also played the drums and I absolutely adored singing. Like I thought I was going to be the next Beyonce from Malawi and Manchester. So, <laughs> um, I really convinced myself I was going to be musical, but having African parents, they pushed me down the academic route. In the academic sphere, I was still very, very creative, very expressive, and I'm a very emotional person. So I like to have that come out in my my academic work as well so naturally I gravitated towards English religious studies because yes that that's very um dear to me like in terms of Christianity and also just understanding other um religions as well so I really loved religion and I loved media I loved anything that was very expressive 
So after secondary school, this naturally led to me doing A-levels that were naturally very creative as well. So I did media studies, I did English, and I did uh, philosophy, theology, and ethics. I did very well in these subjects, and I, I could just see it in my near future. Like, I was either going to be a teacher or something very academic, because I really enjoyed it. But I just couldn't accept that for myself because I just thought it was quite a limiting career for what I had in mind for the future for myself. So nevertheless, um, let me break down what my career actually looks like then from college. So I actually was a customer experience advisor. Then I went into a waitressing job after that. Then I went into sales. Then I went into mentoring young children in secondary school who didn't really know what they wanted to do. And I was also a, an ambassador for um, a education institution where we kind of told students and showed students how they could progress irrespective of their family background. So some families, maybe their parents never really had an office job or their parents didn't really go to university. So we showed them what the possibilities were. Um, not that they should go down that route, but just opening their options to, to, to that kind of thing. So from that kind of mentorship, ambassadorship route, I then went into um, part-time teaching as well on the side, all while I was very still very creative and I was doing a journalism uh, placement for an, a Midlands um, TV station called Lots TV and I was doing that kind of journalism side of things. My English side was um, the English language, the media studies that was kind of being expressed through a journalism career but that was not paid and it was very much like interning and trying to prove yourself to get the big contract basically. Um, I then became a videographer and photographer, worked out in America and still with, within the young children's sphere, it was um, something similar to Camp America. So still working with young people. So I really merged this desire of helping young people, helping people and the creator side of me. And it was just, it was amazing, but I had no money and I really struggled with that. So I came back home and um, after traveling and working with all sorts of clients and I decided I wanted to explore a, a new career because I was teaching, I was doing journalism, I was doing videography and, and um, all this creative stuff and I had no money. I would always go home and sponge off my mom, sponge off my sister and they'd be like, oh, Rachel's back again, like, because <laughs> some of the venture failed and <laughs> God bless them. They really supported me. I never felt like I was not supported. And my dad would always be like, what are you doing next? <laughs> so kudos to my family. They're not the traditional African family. They really indulged me and I felt very, very supported. But I had to ask myself a really difficult question of how am I going to be able to support myself and live the life that I want to live financially in a creative world where what I was doing was in very uh, big supply but very low demand and there was a journalist graduating every day there was a journalist doing an internship for free in every city there was a lot of creatives that were coming out of the woodworks and not a lot of companies wanted to pay us um, a decent amount. I remember I got offered 800 pounds a month for a journalism full-time role. And I felt very, very helpless. I, I felt like, oh, I have to accept it because the next person will take it. Because there's so much, so many people that are willing to take any chance either for free or very little. So I did a boot camp, and this boot camp allowed me to have a view into the new <laughs> the new thing that at the time which was tech I, I just thought how am I even going to be successful in tech I've been creative my whole life I'm not scientific I'm not my mathematical even though I've got A's and B's in these subjects I didn't particularly enjoy them so I was thinking how am I going to be successful 
in this world that I never envisioned for myself. I've never really explored it to in a depth. So this boot camp was really good at explaining what software development life cycles were, um, what different careers there are, business analyst roles, product owners, developers, and testers. A testing role fit me perfectly because I'm a very inquisitive person. I like to ask questions. I'm not super technical for me to sit there and build an application, but I'm technical enough to sit there and query things. And um, mm -hmm. I was able to put those skills that I had within journalism, which was quite technical in the sense of uh, we use cameras a lot. We, we still use software. We, we know, you know, we're, we're really good with like maybe laptops and things like that. I was always on a laptop. So that wasn't a new concept to me and using good software wasn't a new co concept to me. Having fast processing powers and things like that wasn't a new pro concept to me. So it was kind of adding on to that existing IT knowledge that I had. So. I naturally had a very good eye for detail and things like that. Being a creative, you have to create things in a way that the consumer won't, I don't know, like say you've got a shaky camera and everything's shaking. No, people are going to be like, well, why am I going to watch the news if everyone on TV is shaking, that kind of thing. So that kind of attention to detail, I could can translate that to a, to a website and be like, oh, when I go into this website, this is really jarring. You need to fix this, or this is a really a good experience for me, or this would be really annoying to the, to the, um, end user, things like that. So I could pick out bugs quite easily. So I was able to translate those skills and experiences to that world. And I thought this fits me perfect. So fast forward, I've been able to, <laughs> I was able to, there's a very long story from starting that boot camp into actually landing my first job. And then now to being a senior test engineer, it's been a very long journey and this channel is here. So we can obviously explore that journey together. I would be really excited to kind of bring you guys onto, um, my journey right now and also catch you up with how far I've come. Um, mostly because I would like to equip other people to get into tech. I want other people to know what tech is, what the tech ecosystem looks like, what different roles there are and how you could fit in depending on your experiences. Cause like I said, I've had so many different roles. Um, and I would have never anticipated me when I was in school. If you asked little Rachel going, you know, playing the drums, if you asked her, what do you want to be? I wouldn't have said software test engineering. And I would have told you if it's not creative, I'm not going to be happy. But fast forward to today, I'm actually really happy in my, in my role. I have quote unquote, <laughs> job security, even though I don't believe in that. I have high, um, I have a high likelihood to be able to find work and I am very comfortable in my career at the moment. And I would like to give people that, uh, because tech is growing every single day. Tech is the new, I guess it's the biggest thing. Every company now technically should be a tech company because we all need websites. We all probably need apps and there are jobs being created every single day within tech, whatever discipline that you have, you can transition it into a tech role and bring your expertise, your knowledge into a tech role. So I would like to equip people to hopefully be able to say, okay, I know what different roles there are in tech and I know how to get there. I know what boot camps to take. I know what qualifications to get for myself. And hopefully we can equip you guys to actually be successful in a new tech role. It's predicted that by 2030, manual labor jobs are going to decrease by 13%. And tech roles are literally growing every single day. There's, there's new roles every single day being created. I know the giant AI word is being thrown around, but even that is creating new roles. So this is the right time to position yourself to maybe ask the question, could I get into tech? And if I'm not super technical, what can I, where can I fit in? I'm quite bubbly and very conversational. Where 
where are those kind of roles within tech? Because trust me, there are roles for any type of person and you don't have to fit a stereotypical look to get into tech or a stereotypical academic background to get into tech as well. So, um, hopefully you join me on this channel and this journey. You can find me on socials. Um, I'm on TikTok and I'm on Instagram, I'm on LinkedIn as well. And of course I'm on YouTube as well. So you can just search Rachel Malotta and I'll come up, send me a message, comment on the video, whatever you want me to cover. And I will definitely, or hopefully try and cover everything that you guys want. And most importantly as well, I want you guys to let me know about your journey. If you are choosing to go down a tech road and you don't have to do it alone. There's so many people who can support you on the internet. And that's the fun thing about tech. There's no boundaries. There's no kind of like isolation, if you will. It, there is if you create it, but it's definitely very well connected. So hopefully I'll see you guys um, on my fortnightly videos here on Tech Talks with Rachel. I'll see you next week. Thanks, guys.